Hello everyone, it is December 27th, 2022. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday! Welcome to this episode, the last Harp Tuesday episode of 2022. And today, what I thought would be interesting is to do a real-time look at, at trying to memorize the main theme of Zobel's uh, The Fountain, or At The Fountain. So this is one of two classic pieces in the pedal harp repertoire that represent flowing water, the other one being Hasselman's La Source. And it's interesting because Zobel's was published in 1897 and then Hasselman's was published one year later in 1898. How much Hasselman's was inspired by Zobel, I don't know, they're very similar. But Zobel has this beautiful middle section, right, which goes away from this type of thing into and I'll try to do a look at that later on but for this I'm just going to look at the main theme so for whatever reason I've never actually learned this well enough to perform it like I've read through it I know it a little bit uh, but I haven't memorized it and to me musically it's a superior piece to the Hasselmanns but the nice thing about the Hasselmanns is it's such a recurring pattern we don't have a you know we don't have a middle section this one also has some moments where we go sort of a pause and so in terms of an etude I think the Hasselmanns is it's definitely easier to learn it's definitely an easier piece even if it's maybe not musically, to my mind, quite as good. So yeah, this is a beautiful piece of music. And so this main theme then, that starts here on the last bar of the first page, on, on this edition at least, right here, is what I want to focus on. So there's a, there's this intro, main theme, middle section, back to the main theme, and then the ending is, is uh, similar to the main theme, but it's different than we had the first time we got the main theme. And... I'm going to be employing sort of the same strategies I talked about in memorizing cherry trees at Murchiston, this idea of looking for patterns. So there are thousands of notes in this piece, but we don't have to try to memorize thousands of unconnected series of notes. We can look for patterns. And again, I don't want to rely just on muscle memory. And it's also a way of learning away from actually playing a piece. So what I find teaching is I might be teaching a piece that I don't particularly know, but I'm looking for patterns, trying to point them out to students, and in the process, I end up learning it, even though I'm not playing it. And so, yeah, we're looking for patterns here. And first pattern that I think is is maybe fairly obvious, but, but it's worth noting, is that the first bar and the second bar, oops, first bar and the second bar are the same. Sorry, I'll do the half page turn again so you can see both except for the left hand chord at the beginning. Uh, first time it plays a one, five, eight, 10, and then it plays just an E octave. But this, is exactly the same. And that's great, and the thing is, if you're a good sight reader, you might be able to read through something like this, play it fluently, and maybe not even notice that those two bars are the same. But once you do, it's so much easier. And again, just helps with memorization. So let's look at what's going on then in the, these bars. And they'll come back, this little theme will come back quite often. So if we can memorize this, hey, we've already memorized a, quite a chunk. So this, it's the same shape in both hands, down an octave for the left hand. And then it's only the right thumb that moves, but everything else is the same. So you could think of this is a seventh chord shape, in this case, a, a C7 inversion. It's probably an E6, right? We've got an E chord down here with the key of E flat. Uh, I, I tend to more naturally think of things in seventh chord shapes, right? I don't, if I think about a seventh chord shape, I, I can find out without having to think, oh yeah, what's a sixth chord shape? Um, uh, but really it doesn't matter. All that matters is it makes sense to you. And of course, in many ways, saying an E6 helps because it makes sense musically that it's an E, chord, e flat chord. In any case, I, I feel confident in knowing this starting chord shape. And so then all I need to know is I do that. And this pattern of right, left, right, 
right again, right, left, right is fairly consistent. So we have these, you know, we're in, what are we in, 6, 8, right? So we have these two groups of three, right, left, right, and then again, right, left, right, with potential changes. So let me see, then, let's try those two bars. Like, I, I feel pretty good about that. So what comes next? Well, hmm, this next bar, then, ah, it's kind of the same thing in that the starting shape in the right hand is in the same left hand, same in the right hand, same in the left hand, same in the right hand, and then the very final group is different. So we get this. Again, you could think of this as a F7 inversion or an A6 inversion. up and not just the thumb so again it's up a third but it's it's moving up a, an inversion so instead of keeping four three two the same the whole hand moves up oh sorry so what next Ooh. so now this next bar right is a little bit different because here the right hand plays that's a high g up there i'll write it in um but we don't continue with a, you know, one E and a, we, we don't have all these three second notes. So we have just kind of a pause. There's the right. And then again, left, right, right, but no extra notes, pause, left, right. Oh, and look, this next bar is the same as the beginning bar and the second bar, except there's a, a, a pedal change going on there. Okay. So, but let's go back to this bar here. So left hand is playing a root seventh chord shape and a root seventh chord shape first time on C and then down on A with a thumb. Okay, however we want to think about that. And the right hand plays this G. So we were up a fifth from the last melody note. This is starting on C, remember that. And then this, we could think of, it's a, a D chord, right? So when the thumb comes back down to this D, it's a root position D chord. So it's just starting on a 10 and then going to the eight. Here we know this is the starting on the A, so root seven. Oh, and the right hand mirrors that. Hmm. So. left hand is an octave it's not that chord it's an octave aha and there's that f sharp that's coming as a pedal change let's try from the beginning then here still an e octave i believe up an inversion g nothing left hand start on a c there's this D chord, A, just an octave, and I changed the pedal. Okay, so I was a little unsure at the end of the second bar, so the first bar on this page, this transition here. And let me get rid of some of these markings. So I've created a separate layer, a Harp Tuesday layer, so I can just go delete, clear, active layer, and that should get rid of that, leaving still my pedal markings. I also actually uh, created a new file, uh, copied a previous file, so that if I muck up this one, I still have my old copy uh, with all my pedal markings. Okay, so this is this, right? This is the end of this bar here. Okay, let's start from the beginning again. Okay, 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 okay. 
not so bad in, in the short term at least right now. Um, we'll see how, how much that sticks. Okay, let's look at this start of this third line. What's going on here? Okay, so now we get this pedal change and F sharp and A sharp, the more you play the harp, right, the more you start to see these pedal change pairs, right, just because of the way music works, that certain pedals often get changed at the same time. So F sharp and A sharp, that makes sense. That's a pair that often happens. Um, so, and we're gonna, we've changed that F sharp. We're gonna start with an A sharp. What's going on in this bar? Well, this, that is the same pattern as the very first bar we had of a shape. You know, again, you could call this an F7 inversion. Um, a shape, you could also, so I, I know a harpist who likes to think about uh, F, about um, seven chord shapes. You've got the root, then you have, for example, pinch the top, where one and two are close to each other, pinch the middle, and pinch the bottom. And so in this case, you could think of this as pinching the middle, with two and three being next to each other is another way. We start with an A, and two and three are next to each other. Um, so we're getting that. And then again, like the very first bar, two, three, four stay the same, and it's just the thumb. So we skip the C, we're not going just up a third, we're going up to a fifth. Okay. Left hand is doing an F sharp. Hmm. So up until this point, we play this E chord and then a bunch of E octaves. So now we have an F sharp. So yeah, we're just gonna have to remember that. We're, we're gonna look for some patterns as we go on to see if some, there's a way to help remember that. Okay, so this then. Well, my hand already knows we're going to a G inversion. I think that's correct, yes. So we move into a G inversion, right? So G octave, a big stretched out G chord, right? Where we skip the B. Left hand's on a root. And this time we do play the B, now it's just, it's just the eight notes in a row on a B chord. Mm, now we get an interesting little shape here. So, I think the principle here on the second half of the bar is similar to the first. That here we get a stretched first uh, pattern in the right hand, that this thumb is, is quite far away from the next note. Same here. And then everything else is the same, right? That it's just the thumb that moves. Let me uh, get rid of that as well. So in that case, this chord, so your G chord, D7, if you want to call that. We're starting on D, we're playing a D octave. Let's, let's call it a D7. And then we skip, right? We, we, we don't play the C, for example. We go all the way down to the A to find the same chord that the left hand is playing. Let's keep going. I, I want to keep going to the next bar. Here's another G chord. G minor. Okay. So we get a, a very predictable eight notes in a row into a root. So the right hand has gone down one inversion. Ah, we have to remember to change our pedal here. Aha. We're moving into a B7. Right, uh, dominant seven. Um, but it starts, the second half of this starts as if it's just a, a B chord, right? Um, uh, no, so the left hand is in fact continuing down on a B chord for the rest of that. So we have this G chord, continue down, B root in the right hand. Here's the seven. And this, aha, yes, in fact, this is our old friend. This is the same as the beginning. So let's take a look here then at these sort of, hmm, because this, this is the same as the beginning, right? So then we have these three bars, one, two, three. 
before we get back to this this <laughs> recurring theme um we have the pedal changes we have this f7 into the g minor d g minor b7 right b okay okay so I want to try it then from that first bar of these three bars. So we've changed our pedals. We have those two naturals. We are, okay, so we're at F sharp. We're gonna have a G, D, I believe. G again. Nothing in E flat. Let's see. No, G, F natural, E. So we get a nice descending little bass line there. So F sharp up to G, down to D, which we might expect G and D, but even though it's actually switching to a different chord in the right hand. Back to G, F, natural, E flat. Okay, so this is one of these big jumps, right? So we go up a fifth. Ah, and this this was one that somehow from playing it, uh, my hand knew this, this G shape. Are we changing our pedal yet? No, and we're going down to a D. This is just a normal, very expected G. Pedal changes. Oh, not A yet. Okay, let's try that again. So F sharp, and we have our pedal changes. three of these of these two bars the left hand is playing a root and a second inversion is playing up on just a normal chord whereas before that well I guess it has a in bar two it has a, a normal chord but then it's back to a seventh type of shape okay try the other Correct, but it, I had really had to think about it. Is that no? That is that seventh chord. So okay. point. Okay, why well, I've, I've lost this. Okay, I know it's an E. Yeah, it moves up an uh, inversion. G. first bit which I was able to play perfectly from memory it was very much a short term sort of thing it's still not super fluent but I did those words that I used by, by describing it out loud <laughs> so whether it's helpful for you it's certainly helpful for me by describing it out loud it gives me something to hang on to as I'm playing it to say oh yeah right this time it jumps up an inversion and not just the thumb etc etc let's keep going let's keep going so we get here now to this bar right here which is the main theme again. This is the same. Is this one here the same as this one? Oh, sorry, not that one. This one here. Um, yes. Okay, how about this? And I can tell you this one is not because it's, it's quite recognizable because the left hand this time does play does play, uh, or the right hand, I mean, 
does play everything on this beat instead of just a single note. Other than that, perhaps it's the same. So the left hand again, root position, root position down a third. The right hand, uh, I can't quite see this note, let's get rid of that. Right hand, there's that big stretch D chord into a D, into a root D in this case. And then the ending, ah, the ending is the last bit is different, right? The last four notes here are different. Oops. Let's see if we can get it. That before it was a, a B7, and now it's a D7 shape. So a root position shape, but different because we're moving into something different on the next bar as well. So if we go back to here, for example, we know we have this. Uh, did I do an octave here? I'm not sure. I'll, I'll try to remember to do an octave. This shape, still a little bit sketchy on that. So, sorry. Ah, uh, yeah. See, the left hand really being aware of moving left hand down because it kind of wants to stay here, which is the where it played at the beginning of the bar, and it's of course what the right hand is going to do. It's going to do that D seven shape if you want to think of it that way. So that bar again. Sorry. This one more time from from uh, from the main theme again from here. So ah, octave. This. Good enough. Ah, so here this bar we can see the left hand stays the same has this E inversion. Great. Right hand is playing, uh, let me clear this here for a moment, getting a little bit messy again. The right hand is playing again an E inversion. Thumb jumps. So, you, you know, we get like the, the, the five in terms of if the E is one, five, eight, seven, So in fact, the only thing that's changing in this bar is our thumb, because this, the G, E, B in the right hand stays the same. You'll notice that I in fact do use a D flat there instead of a C sharp. Um, I just like how it works out in the end um, on the next bar. Uh, yeah. Um, so let's, uh, sorry, let me get rid of that again so I can see a little bit better. And let's try a little half page turn, oops so down here so we can see this next bar so it's only the thumb bum 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 makes sense right we're coming down that's easy okay another bar where uh, it's all the same except the thumb. I, I just want to try and mention here, we've got a G. So even though we're playing an E chord, we've moved up to a G. And one way to think about this is before we've always been starting on G and playing an E octave, we moved up a third to start on a B and to play a G octave. So this next bar, right, or this first bar, this next page, it's just the right thumb that moves. Yes, that's correct. And it's from dum, 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 dum. so if we go from the previous bar, we have so this is moved up to the B. Where is the left hand? Yeah, left hand is a big. You might expect it to maybe be here. Previously, the left hand has been quite close to the right hand, but here the left hand is all the way down. 
to this, I got, you know, a C first inversion seventh chord, if you want to think of it that way. Um, so the hands are not the same, right? The hands are, are, are we can think of them as being different. They meet with a B, that the bottom three here start where the bottom three and the right hand are. We've got this E natural that we just changed. So we have that C coming from the melody line from the previous bar, and then we go down to G. We're moving up. Half inversion, right? Ah, see, so some of this, some of this sticks in my hand a little bit. Here again, this is another bar where it's only the thumb that's moving, right? I think this is correct, that this bar, yeah, it's only the thumb that's moving. And we just have to remember there's these pedals, right? So... Yes, this is the bar with a fairly fast lever change, uh, pedal change to get F sharp A natural. Thing that's changing is the thumb. Again, the left hand is quite a ways away from the right hand. Yes, it's also true that the, the third note, uh, third note up from the left hand is also the bottom note of the right hand. You wasn't see on the previous bar, the last bar of the first line, that this is just a, a standard standard uh, F chord, right? with a student. So this next bit, uh, we get a long sequence where basically we're playing a G chord with sort of a wandering thumb in the right hand that resolves into G each time, right? So this, this is a standard G inversion, uh, G sequence. And here we get an E, but then it resolves into the D that we would expect for a, a G chord. So we get this. So here, we're headed to the next inversion up, but we have an E first. Next inversion up, which will be here, but we have an A first. Next inversion up, but we have a C first. Move down the, an inversion. Right? Same thing, down inversion, but an E first. Down inversion, C first. And finally, as you might expect, we return to that dominant seven. So that whole sequence, again, this is where patterns are so helpful. This whole one, two, three, sort of three and a half because of the end of this one, uh, right here, we change into a, into a different chord. It's all a G chord where it just the thumb starts one higher than you would expect. So, and we start with the G octave, so this, once we have this, oh sorry, A natural. This, right, still C. Try that again, so it's all G. We do start with the G octave, I said, yes, that's correct. to our, our old familiar friend. Uh, excellent. So uh, I wonder whether I can whether I can do this sequence from the last time we had the main theme all the way to this main theme we've just gone to. So from what is it? Uh, sort of this variation here. 
So I don't, I don't know if I can. Let's see. Oh, right, we hit octave. This. Continue. E with a G, right? Yes, that's what I talked about. That this is uh, it is an E, e flat major, but only thumb moves. Uh, this was a C7, right? Down. It's a C, must be an F. It's an F? Yeah, so I knew it was a C for the melody, and so I, I thought it had to be an F chord. Oh, and we have a D natural there. Stop moving, we got pedal change. Another pedal change. get to a, a easy to, to, to sort of chunk pattern it suddenly becomes much easier to memorize than something that's changing a little more so that middle section is still was relying a little bit on my ear in terms of knowing how I expected the melody to go I'll try that one more time I won't look at that previous page so we have this I'm oh, sorry here sorry right there that we go from playing this into not this but this so two finally has to change right that it's we've gotten so used to just the thumb changing I'm oh, sorry just like previously it's only the right hand that has the a flat in that seventh uh, one more time, one more time, one more time. finding that technically I need to work on that just a little bit it's not quite as good as I would like um, but that's great that's great so now and then we're back to the main theme and then uh, things happen a little bit I think this next page yeah we don't actually come back to that main theme it's it's all something a little bit different but I think it's been it's been long enough was it 34 minutes okay I think it's definitely been long enough but hopefully that gives you uh, an idea of how potentially to approach something like this. Now, as I say, 
a lot of this is sort of short-term gain. Sure, I can do it right now, but if I set this aside and don't play this, will I retain this? Maybe not so much, but I have these, I have this verbal monologue going on then that as I'm playing it, I can draw on. And, it, and as you saw there, sometimes even if I couldn't play it smoothly, I could crunch, crunch, crunch and know what's coming up next. So that combination then of, of physically practicing it to get everything smooth, but also having this dialogue and this, this idea of where we're going next can be really helpful in terms of memorizing. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. And I think what I might do, as I say, is to do an episode then maybe looking at the middle section, uh, talking about some of the challenges there and how to, how to play that. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful piece. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, have a wonderful uh, New Year's. I will, I'm gonna of course do a traditional New Year's Day improv and then I will see you on January, whatever it is, January, I can tell you in fact what it is, January 10th for another episode of Harp Tuesday. Cheers. <laughs>